there is the Lord's acceptance of our intellect. Now, that is important because he would want us to use our intellect to bring change into the world so that we can govern ourselves and be governed by others and bring about the fulfillment of the kingdom of God here on earth. We are called this day, like Samuel, to listen and discern where God is leading us, ready to offer acceptance ourselves to others that we may meet even when they are the smallest or the youngest or even the last in line. One, one lesson that we get from the first reading is that it is not about the parameters set by others. It's about the parameters set by God. Some things, some things never change. And Jesus is one of them. Some things never change. And Jesus is one of them. He still accepts people as he was doing them the days. He is still accepting people. He doesn't wait until they measure up or become nice enough to be accepted. He accepts them now with all their current problems, with all their wrong thinking, with all their wrong beliefs, all their sins and wrong choices. Jesus accepts you just the way you are. He welcomes you just the way you are. He is the one who accepts you, not anybody else. He is the one. For us to, to, be, to, to fit in this divine plan of God and to understand the concept of divine acceptance, what do we need? What is it that we need that we can understand that we are accepted just as we are? Number one, we have to develop a calm as you are attitude. We have to develop a calm as you are attitude. Just the way we are. Many times we, are, we, we qualify for one thing, for the other one, for the other one, for the other one. But with God, there's something we call an attitude of come as you are. Number two, we have to root out the us versus them attitude. The us versus them attitude. And that we have to remove. And in this context, I want to speak directly to our gracious single mothers. I know there is always the, the them, the married and as that must be removed. Remember, your children, your sons and daughters are the same as the sons and daughters of those married women. Do not remove yourself from the love of God. This we must remove. If for us to accept, for, for us to enjoy divine acceptance, we must root out the as versus them attitude. Number three, we have to understand that spiritual life is a process. It is not something that happens instantly. That way, we will be patient because our breakthrough will happen in the fullness of time, the time of God. Number four, we need to have an encounter that goes deeper than a chance meeting. An encounter that goes deeper than a chance meeting. David had an encounter. An encounter that added in anointing. The woman with the hemorrhage had an encounter. An encounter that changed her life. We need this encounter. This encounter with Christ 
must be deeper, an encounter that leaves us better than we were. Number five, we need to accept the truth as defined by Jesus, not by others, because people will define truth, but we need uh, to accept the truth as it is defined by Jesus. You know why? Because he is the truth, he is the way, and he is life. Number six. We don't become acceptable by God by religious rituals. Even if we stay in church, even if we are anointed with holy oil, even if we drink holy water, if we are not accepted, we are not accepted. Unfortunately, there are a lot of those religious rituals and they are leaving us so lost, devastated, and many a times frustrated. Number seven, we need to know our God-given identity. Uh -huh. We need to know our God-given identity. He gives us the identity. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. In fact, Jesus Christ ratifies our position in the genealogy. We did read the genealogy, and we did say that we have found women there who may not have been one of the most popular women in the Bible. Maybe some of them will be able to, to fit in the category of women called the nameless women of the Bible or the unpopular women of the Bible. We may be unpopular before people for whatever it is their categorization. But when God has said it is her, it is you. When he says it is him, yes, it is you. You know why? Because he has the final say. Number eight, pray frequently and do the prayers that transforms. Pray frequently the prayers that transform. The prayer that transforms you as a child of God. Number nine, know that nothing is too hard for God. Know that nothing is too hard for God. Whatever it is that you are going through, please know that with God, you will overcome. And number 10, recognize that God uses obstacles for his purposes. There will be times that you go through very difficult moments. Remember, obstacles are not unknown to God. Because as we say, in heaven, there is no breaking news. He knows everything. And therefore, if he, does know, if he knows everything, then the obstacles that we go through, they, they can be used by God, and he uses accurately them for his purposes. Listen to this, Genesis 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Genesis 50, verse 20. 